Welcome, everybody, to Beat Your Addictions with John Giordano. I'm not John. That's John over there. Are you sure? <laughs> I am not John. Right. I'm your co-host, Scott Jones, with John Giordano. Um, and talking about Beat Your Addictions, before we start the show, just a quick reminder, if you don't mind, if you like the show, uh, save it and certainly subscribe and share it with your friends. Share it with your friends. It's important we do that. We don't spend a lot of money trying to go out there and advertise the show or try to, you know, project it. We expect it to be spread by word of mouth and, and word of word of, word of text, something. computer. We're know. old guys. We don't know. You know, it used to be you yelled out your front door. This now, is a digital world. It's a digital world. I don't know how they share it. Share it. Uh, yeah, share it on social it, media. Listen, a lot of this stuff can help people that are, have mental health issues and addiction and it's just knowledge. Look, you know, if you like it, good. If you don't like it, it's okay. Okay. But at least be open-minded and view it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, if you have any information that you want to share with us, if you go to johnjgiordano.com, it's right there on your screen, johnjgiordano.com. Um, his email's there. You can reach John. Let them know what you want us to talk about. Or if you'd like to be a guest, maybe let us know. Uh, but we do this show as often as we can and try to get the information out to you. Uh, John, uh, just past 4th of July. Hope you had a good one with your family. Everybody's good? Everybody's great. Fantastic. And you're staying busy. Ugh. We're opening up, a, a possibly opening up a, a ayahuasca, ibogaine, ketamine treatment, and, uh, and wellness and with nutrient IVs and gut testing and micronutrient testing and wow. all the stuff that I do in, um, in the Bahamas. So wow. we're, we're in the process of raising money to do that. We already got the approval from the prime minister. So we know we that one. I, I got a lot of projects going on. I don't want to take the show talking about my projects. No, no, no. I want I'm to just, talk about our guests. But I want you to, if you want to know more about those things, you go to johnjgiordano.com. That'll give you the link to the ketamine clinics and everything else as well. So it's all right there. Please check it out. Um, yeah, let's talk about our guest. He's coming to us from Fort Myers, just across the state on the other side. You know, quick shot across the Alligator Alley. And you'd be at his front door. Um, we were talking with David Essel. And let me tell you something about him. He's a best-selling author, 13 books. He's pregnant with his 14th right now. We're expecting it any day. Uh, the doctors are standing by. We're ready for that 14th book. But he's a counselor, an executive coach, an international speaker, a radio TV podcast personality host sports psychology coach, and an all-faith minister. Um, so this guy obviously only works part-time, John. Yeah, I know. I'm very familiar with that part-time work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, without further ado, because this is a very busy gentleman, we're so glad to have him here. Ladies and gentlemen, David Essel. David, thank you for taking the time out and joining us today. Yeah, uh, Scott. Oh, uh, Scott and John, it's great to be with you. I love your your attitudes. You know, you guys are very upbeat, great energy, and we're going to have a wonderful show helping people to heal. Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't do us any good to sit here and be depressed on the air. I mean, that's not what life is all about. And besides, um, you know, I, I'm on my second go around. John's on his. We've, we've been given a, a, a second chance at life. You don't frown through that. You smile through that. You have fun with it. You know, I can't believe I'm coming up on 39 years of recovery. 39 years of recovery right there. That is awesome. Fantastic. I, mean, I, I didn't think I would get 39 minutes, but, you know, 39 years, I just can't believe it. Yeah. 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 But well, I'm doing God's work, so, you know, it's okay. Hey, and with yeah. my 20 years, we're like a senior citizen of uh, recovery. Are you, David, are you in recovery, by the way? Oh, my gosh. Many, many, many years, John. Yes, very similar to you. Uh, and, you know, the process began for me at 12. My addiction wow. began at 12, you know, which a lot of us do. Um, I've been in this the work for 43 years. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting when you have multiple people coming in on a regular basis and you get down and say, well, when did this begin? You know, it, it's, it blows my mind how many people began between 8 and 14, John. You know, really? and and cool. and in our our private practice, we see this all the time. At first, I thought it was an anomaly, you know, that I started at twelve. But then, as the more you talk to people and you get them to drill down, of when was the first time that you did X, anything mood altering, you know, people start to think back in time and they go, "Oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe now when I look back at the years, it was thirteen or 14. Yeah, and especially it, today, it's relevant today. Today, oh, it's it's like zooming like crazy. Incredible. And, you know, we look at peer pressure at that age, right? Um, I, that's how I started. I wanted to be involved. I wanted to be engaged with a certain group of guys. And the only way I could do it at 12 was the initiation of a 16 ounce warm Budweiser beer. 
And the thing that happened at that time for me, which happens to a lot of people, I found freedom. I was an angry child. I was an extremely sensitive child. I'm an extremely sensitive man still. But, you know, back then I didn't have an, an, any way to understand of how to explain to my parents the way I was feeling. Uh, my parents were awesome, but they didn't know how to get to the core of it. And in the 50s, I remember sitting in a doctor's office as he smoked cigarettes back in the 50s because I was uncontrollable and moody and swings all over the place. Uh, and they said it was allergies. You know, and uh, yeah, you were allergic to people. Yeah, that's, that's right. I sure was, you know, and uh, and then, of course, over the years, you know, things open up. And as you both said, you've gotten second chances myself as well. And it's great to be on a show that is really looking to make a difference. You know, so many of these freaking shows are based on politics and all this crap. So thank you for bringing something viable to the airwaves. Oh, you're very welcome. What do you think about I mean, let me ask you a question. What do you think about the way we're doing treatment today? Oh, it sucks, John. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, it sucks. Listen, on, on our brand new book, we have on the front cover, we have a treatment center owner with an endorsement saying that this program should be in every treatment center in the world and used by every therapist in the world. I mean, that's from right there, right at the top, Bob Long's quote, uh, David Essel's recovery program should be instituted with every retreatment center. Uh, and and every therapist that deals with addiction, you know, so we have treatment center owners that are backing this program and our program goes against a lot of what's out there, you know, and, and John, you said something or Scott said something earlier that I'm going to agree with what I will share in on this program today, you may not agree with and that is okay. I'm not here to convince you that my way is the way. There's a million great ways to get clean and sober. We just happen to find one where we call permanent recovery. We don't dick around with anything other than permanent recovery because ultimately that's what everyone wants. So we just came right out with the book and said, screw all this other stuff that's been going around for 80 years that doesn't work. Right. You know, on, the on the back of the book, Tammy DeNeo, who used to own multiple centers in Malibu, California that were burned down, unfortunately, with those fires. But, you know, she even said to me over the phone, she said, David, I've been in the industry as a treatment center owner for 20 years. After 10 years, I realized we had a revolving door that we, we were thinking we were helping all these people with these programs we were using, but most of them were coming back. And so I went to all these other treatment center owners that I'm friends with in California and said, hey, can we move away from the 12 step model? It's not working for our treatment center. Can we go in a new direction? Can we find something like really fresh? And she said, David, everyone said no. There wasn't one treatment center owner that was willing to look outside of the box. And it is a box, you guys, and you know that. We've been so conditioned that there's one way. And that one way has been talked about for 80 years as if it's some godsend. And it has a 10% freaking success rate. Well, so, it has an actually a five to eight percent recovery rate, but you're close. Okay, okay, you got it. And and John Tammy said the same thing. Tammy said that it was five percent of recovery in her center. Well, you know, you know, uh, you know, I used to. Oh, I don't know if you know this. I used to own a sixty-two bed inpatient facility. Okay. Yeah, well, we had a, a Jayco accredited, but we did alternative medicine. Yeah. And you see, you know, I, I understand about the twelve steps, but you know, I don't disagree with anything all i can say some people it works for the 12 steps some people it doesn't some people right. are, all i know is this the treatment centers today they have the addiction model i call it short-term success long-term failure absolutely i want to flip it i want it to be short-term failure long-term success right it's like working out you know you have aches and pains in the beginning and then you just go through yeah then you have bumps in the road and you have to change well, you know, I was on, I, I did an interview with an owner of, of a, a treatment center out West last week. And, you know, he didn't like the fact that I don't believe in one day at a time recovery. Um, you know, he couldn't wrap his head around it, you know, one day at a time, one day at a time. And so I, I use the, this example that I give in the book as well. Imagine you meet the woman of your dreams. We're just going to make this very stereotypical. You meet the woman of the dreams and you've dated for six or eight months and you're both incredibly in love. And one day you get on your knees and you say, Oh my God, honey, you know, you're the woman of my dreams and I, I want to marry you. What do you say? What do you think? And she freaks out and she's crying and hugging and going, Oh my God, I've waited for this for a long time. And then he says, okay, there's only one catch. I'm going to marry you one day at a time. I will commit 
one day at a time. What do you think? And, you know, just think about the reaction of that woman. You know, I, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of women say, well, are you insane? Like, there's no commitment there. And it's the same thing with recovery, in my opinion. You don't have to agree. No one has to agree. But in 30 years of running the same program that we finally put in the book, we are so secure. What, in is the your, way what, is, what do you do different? I, I like to get that before we get off this here. Yeah. So. What do you do different? Well, you know, a couple of things that we do very deeply. Um, you know, Gabor Mate, who I believe is one of the greatest researchers in addiction recovery, talking about trauma and wounds and everything. So, you know, one of the things we do very differently is that we go way back into where it began, how it began, why it began, all of those kind of questions. And we find with most people, it's between zero and 18 that the, the addiction problem began. Now, when we can logically have them write their addiction story, and they can see exactly who their role models were, why it is that they got into it. We have a, a, a logical beginning, which means we have a logical ending. We can heal in an illogical condition called addiction. So number one, we bring in that. Number two, you know, we look at life recovery, John and Scott. We don't look at addiction recovery. You know, we really, and that's why it's called David Essel's Permanent Alcohol and Life Recovery. We want people to recover their whole life, their relationships, their self-confidence, their self-esteem, uh, their goals for the future, their excitement about today, their passion about living. Now, how we do that is a thousand different tools. We use everything from, and, and you'll know this, John, cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. We use desensitization techniques. And then we go into uh, amino acid therapy. I know you're huge into ketamine and many of the others, which we talk about in the book as well. You know, so we, we really look at it as this incredibly well-rounded approach to living where the addiction part of it really isn't the problem. And what we say is every addiction in the world is caused by our desire to escape reality. You know, if that reality is hating living at home, if the reality is you're in a crap relationship, if whatever it is. I mean, every addiction in the world is created by something that occurs that we don't have the emotional coping skills. So another, and I'll be quiet after this and let you talk, but another big part of what we do is we teach really deep, powerful, effective emotional regulation. And that's a fancy term for we come to a decision in life and we make a decision different than we have in the past. And we teach people how to do this in every area of life. And once again, I want to make this perfectly clear. We want life recovery. We want joy and confidence. And we want the addiction part of it to slowly fade so much so that when someone says to me, like, who is David Essel? I never say I'm a recovering addict, a recovering alcoholic, a former alcoholic, an alcoholic. I don't say anything. I, I'm David Essel. I don't have a label that has anything to do with addiction. And I'll never take one again, which is one of the big reasons that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the 12-step program. People going into rooms for 20 years saying, hi, I'm Jim and I'm, I'm an alcoholic from a sports or even just regular psychology point of view. But from a psychological point of view, we know that self-talk is damning. Absolutely. It's damning to have Absolutely. to have you. I, 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 I turn. I, I tell people, look, you if you're in you're in recovery, you're, you're not, you know, what you could say, I'm a recovering addict. And, you know, you know, uh, um. I'm going to give you a different angle on recovery than what you're talking about. You, you, you mentioned one of the things, which is amino acid therapy. Mm -hmm. I, I work with Dr. Blum. He's a geneticist who found the first, uh, the, the main addiction gene. Mm -hmm. It's called the DRD2 ALE1 variant gene. Doesn't mean if you have that gene that you're going to be an addict, but it means you have the propensity to be right. one. But epigenetic can change the social environment, can change the gene expression. Sure. That being said, but there are other factors that, you know, everybody's looking at the psychological part. Guys, it's not just a psychological problem. I'm sorry. If that's the case, send your head to treatment, leave your body home. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is an integrative system. This is what I lecture about. I've lectured to almost 100 countries now. And they all look at me after the lecture. They go, wow, we never thought about what you said. Well, let's look at some of the co-contributing factors. Number one, if you have a low thyroid, do you think you can have depression and anxiety? Absolutely. All right on. If you have leaky gut syndrome, H. pylori infection, gut issues, depression and anxiety, low testosterone, even mm -hmm. high testosterone can cause depression and anxiety, hypoglycemia, especially with your alcoholics, 
okay? Closed head injuries. You can have depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, and behavioral problems. We're not looking at people as people. We're looking at heads walking around. I'm a traumatologist. I work with police officers that have been in shootings. I work with guys coming back from Iraq, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The trauma, yes. Early childhood, yes. Inner child stuff, absolutely. The things you spoke about, absolutely. Problem is, is that we're not looking at the medical conditions that are co-contributing factors. Why do people use drugs and alcohol? Depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to escape that more than believe it or not anything else because the other things are causing the depression and anxiety. And as you know, anxieties, people live in the future. Depression, yeah. people live in the past. And they don't look at today. And as far as a day at a time, I don't look at things at a day at a time. I look at it as a moment at a time, how my life can change. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about addiction. I'm talking about life because life is what we're really talking about. Oh, John, that's where you and I are 100% you know, in alignment. It's all about life recovery. And, you know, I, I even in my, my clinical practice stop talking about their addictions. I don't go, you know, after the first three to four weeks. And that's when we introduce the concept of permanent. We wait about three to four weeks. We get them to buy into the program. It's a very easy program to buy into. We get them to buy into it. And we tell people, all you need is a 10% desire to succeed. Let us do the rest. If you do what we ask you to do and you have attempt, you don't even like John Scott, I have never in 43 years have someone walked in my office and said, I am so excited to be sober. Never, not one person. But after three to four weeks, when we get down to some of the work that we do, they're open now to saying, well, why wouldn't I want to be permanently recovered? Well, how long is your program for? Well, we have several different ones. We The minimum one we start with is three months. Our real encouraging one that we work with is tw is 52 straight weeks. We okay, believe that inpatient, outpatient, what kind of? Oh, no, it's all outpatient. I mean, people can come into the office, but there's, you know, it's all outpatient. That's excellent. I just, I want to point something out is in, in, in David, I don't know if this is kind of what you were thinking about is uh, a lot of this time with the one day at a time. Uh, you got people with 30, 40 years sober telling people that I might drink tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I might use tomorrow. I only have today. And it, they're basing that in fear. Yes. That is, if I fear the drink or drug, I'll stay sober. Um, <laughs> and, and to me, that's always been the, the most asinine idea. Um, I love this concept, and which is what I preach, is create a life that you don't want to give up. Yeah. Uh, and once you create something better, you don't live in fear of the other things that you no longer want. But to, to, doesn't that one day at a time and all those other concepts, uh, you have to do this perfectly. And if you don't listen to your, if you don't do this, you're going to drink. Um, is, isn't that fear based? No, no, John, you're hundred percent correct. It's fear based. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Scott, I'm so sorry. Um, sorry. We're yes. interchangeable. We're interchangeable. We're interchangeable. <laughs> I see you are. <laughs> You know, it, it's those kind of statements. And, you know, like as long as you keep coming back, you'll be sober. That's creating a codependent audience. Hmm. Like I can only imagine if I looked at my client and said, hey, as long as you keep coming back every week for the rest of your life, you'll stay sober. What? Then your program can't be effective. If I have to be there every freaking day or every week, why? That means there's something missing in the program. We want to empower clients. They do not need me anymore. I want them to walk out that door and go, I, that was great. I say the same exact thing. Listen, if you, you have to keep coming back to me, I'm not getting you well. You're getting you well. That's right. You know, and, and well, see, the, the bottom line is, is that, first of all, some people can't be an outpatient. I'm going to tell you the bottom line. I don't care what kind I of program agree. you got, I got. It, it doesn't yep. matter. Okay. Uh, I always say to people, they need at least six months to nine months. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. 60 days to 120 days inpatient for certain people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they cannot, I don't care what we're teaching them. It, it, their brain is scrambled. That's Most right. people don't understand drugs change the molecular structure of the way we function. Yeah. That's fact. And the bottom line, if you're expecting somebody to think like we think, you're going to fail. So, you, you know, John, when I was one of the greatest pieces of advice I, I was ever given, and I'm surprised that I followed at the time because I was so arrogant. <laughs> but someone told me when you go to a treatment center and you come out, have an expert 
available for 52 straight weeks and go from your 30 days or 28 days in the treatment center into a 52 week program with a counselor. It was the greatest advice I've ever given. I, I openly share this all the time. Uh, my first 52 weeks, my first year of getting out of that treatment center were very difficult. My anxiety was through the roof. My depression was through the roof. Um, how I got to all this is in 1990, I had a failed suicide attempt. And from that failed suicide attempt, we got underneath all of the reasons that I was an addict and all the reasons I was an alcoholic. And, 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 and from that experience, I am able then to say to people, God, I really understand this, but this is not really only about the substance. We have to have something more, more, more deeper for sure. So when I came out of the center and I knew I was going to meet with someone for 52 straight weeks, once a week, it made all the difference in the world. And what you're saying about some people, I mean, the 28 day, you know, I have to be honest with you, John, uh, the, 28 the, days, is forget 28 it. days, it, you know, you really... To me, I was highly motivated, you know, uh, to get clean. And so it happened to work for me. But the 28 days would not have worked if I did not have a 52-week counselor set up. I will tell you that. Well, that's because interesting you said that. Because looking at my own recovery, first of all, they did an intervention on me. I didn't have a problem. You had a problem. <laughs> so that was my, uh, you know, yes. national anthem. Yes. And the, the bottom line is, is that what happened was I went to aftercare once a week for a year and a half. There was only six months at the time. Mm -hmm. All right. But I went, they had to kick me out. Mm -hmm. That's what helped me to stay stable. Mm -hmm. Then I went on an exercise program. Well, I'm a martial artist. So I was always exercising anyway. And also I changed my diet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I took nutrients. I did all the things that I already knew what to do, which I stopped doing when I started using. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is, is that, yes, without aftercare, I call it aftercare, mm -hmm. okay, chances are that people are going to recovery are slim. Because, remember, these old behaviors, it's like, you know, it's like walking in a forest and you see a trail where the, the grass is on both sides and they get it empty spot in the middle where you follow mm -hmm. well, that's your the neurology in your brain so those, all those old ways of doing things are very strong yes now you got to create a new pathway and it needs support it's just like a seed you put in the ground you got to water it you got to make sure it gets enough sun and make sure the mm -hmm. soil is good mm -hmm. so in order to do all that it takes time that's right and the brain is damaged yeah and who's going to argue that the you know what, you know, most, I don't know what you do for post-acute withdrawal syndrome, but I, 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 you ask a doctor, they tell you time. Well, that's baloney because mm -hmm. they don't know what to do. Yes. Okay. That's right. Hyperbaric medicine, mm -hmm. oxygen under pressure heals the brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't do any of that. I did it at my treatment center. We did mm -hmm. acupuncture. We did neural feedback. We did yes. aromatherapy. Sure. We did lymphatic massage, colonics. We, we were the leaders in the industry in alternative medicine, and this was 25 years ago? Yes. You know? So these are the things that we keep doing talk therapy, but there's, a, there's the body still there. Yeah. There are co-contributing factors to this, you know, problem. Absolutely. Oh, and that's why, you know, John, and you go deeper from the physical point of view than we do, but we believe highly in amino acid therapy. I mean, I can't believe the difference it made in my life. Well, we did, we, we did research on that. Yeah. We, oh. we have a formulation, Dr. Blum does, where it upregulates dopamine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. You're hundred percent correct. If yeah. Done yeah, in I the mean, right proportions and, and the right, most people don't realize this is since it's an unregulated industry. Mm-hmm. OK, you have to make sure you get your amino acids from a GMP lab. And what amino acids? Right. It's not just amino acids. No, there are certain ways that they go together synergistically to work on upregulating dopamine. Right. Right. So on. there's a whole bunch of stuff. I love it. I love it. We're on the same page for sure. David, let me get a couple of quick questions in here because we're going to run out of time. And mm -hmm. we definitely want to have you back because there's so much we should be talking about. Yeah. Um, First of all, John's a martial artist. I'm a marital artist. Um, and I I'm wish, one I, of those two, I, wish I had adopted that one day at a time in those, some of those <laughs> weddings. Uh, that, that would have saved me some money on divorces. If I can imagine. Uh, we need to, that's your next book right there. Yeah, like, there you go. One day marriage. Uh, 
<laughs> It'd be very popular with a lot of us. I, I, I have to ask you before uh, you got into all of this, this obviously is a teenager or as a young man, this wasn't what you probably planned to do with your life. What, what path were you on and how did you get on what you're doing now? Well, you know, I've always been very um, interested in sports. I played basketball for two years at Syracuse University, uh, and my pathway was the NBA. You know, like that's what all of us kids think back then. And and I'm a course, Syracuse guy. What's that? I'm a Syrac. I'm from Syracuse. No, are you really? No kidding. I do a show with Shackelford. Used to play for Syracuse. Oh, sure, Dale Shackelford. Yeah, yeah. I used to get drunk with Derek Coleman years oh, ago. Oh my god. No, I, I grew up in Syracuse. I went to Syracuse. I've got pictures of me with Otto over here on the side. Oh, sure. Well, oh, that's was, great. You know, and here's something interesting you'll find. Um, you know, I well, I played a very, very long time ago. Jim Beheim, when I was there, was the assistant coach. That's how long ago. And he's been there 44, 43 years or something like that. And uh, I worked just, with the Onondagas in Syracuse. What's that? No, I worked with the Onondagas. Oh, the Onondagas, the reservation. Yeah, yeah. I worked yeah. with them. Yeah, Fantastic. I, I did, I did John, that's so cool. Yeah. That, oh, and, and we all know how badly those individuals and those res, uh, Ooh, reservations need your bad. help. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Horrendous. But, a, lot but yeah. System, a, lot of, ooh, a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. All right, so you, 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 you were in, in Syracuse for a while, so now I know where the addiction came from. I understand now. <laughs> yes. Well, when you're <laughs> living in darkness for 360 days a year, because we never get sun there, you're going to get depressed. Um, but, but, you know, and so I took those years at Syracuse, and then I graduated. Uh, uh, my, my first degree was an undergrad in health studies, and then I went on to sports psychology uh, exercise physiology, marketing, and then eventually went on, uh, you know, to become a pastor of a all faith church and a minister. Um, and so my, my, my career really broadened, you know, in the eighties, it was all sports psychology and athletes. I still have athletes today. And our brand new book, as a matter of fact, is for professional athletes. So, um, helping them get their mental and physical game to the next level. So I'm always a huge fan of athletics, but the world of addiction really grabbed me. And I would say it's probably about 40 to 45% of what we do. Uh, we, we cover everything in the world, but you know, the addiction recovery pro or process to me is so interesting. And I've really held back, you know, for a long time, looking at what's going on, um, wanting to make sure that the program we created 30 years ago was solid as hell. Uh, and about a year ago, when we went through the pandemic and we were seeing such a huge increase of addictions coming in, we knew then we had to put the book you know, out there for the first time. And yeah, we're ruffling feathers. Of course, we're going to because you know we don't believe in a program that's 80 years old that's never been updated. Uh, there's way too much information, as John has been sharing a ton of wealth of information on the show already. There's so much information out there that the average individual has no clue about that we hope we can start to break through and to open some minds and get some people moving in a totally different direction so we can reach permanent recovery. Well, what I say is I don't care if they go to 12-step meetings. I don't care if they go to church. I don't care if they go to therapy. I don't care if they just live their life the way they want to live their life in a healthy way. Everything, everybody's different. Everything mm -hmm. floats everybody's boat. So I'm I, honest with you, I'm not against anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, and the bottom line is, is that, what we have to realize is that like psychedelics, it's going to change everything. Now, I was against psychedelics in the beginning, I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I was at a conference in Taipei that I was lecturing in and the scientists were talking about ketamine and how it's an epidemic in Taipei, all this stuff. I said, I'm not going near that. But now I see the people that are getting well. Yeah. I've done ketamine myself. If, if it's done with therapy, if it's done with life life skills, and it's yes. done with all the stuff that you do, we do yes. the same thing. Yes. But we also do micronutrient testing, gut testing, mm -hmm. all these other things that add to it. Because you could talk all day long to your gut; it's not going to change anything. That's right. So and the we, bottom line we, is, you you need to look at everything, not just the head. John, you're 100 percent correct. And, you know, in the book, we agree with you a thousand percent. We talk about the importance of the microbiome um, and how 70 percent of serotonin is there. And how can we be in a good mood if that 70 percent is being uh, diminished from being delivered to the brain because of extreme uh, bacteria growth in the gut that can throw right. everything right? I mean, so we're, we're in the same we're in the same page. Hey, brother. Then it's cool, man. That's where we're at. <laughs> well, what I what I hate to do is break this up because, you know, especially now that I know he's an orange man and, I, and I'm proud, uh, you know, 
but uh, you've got another appointment you've got to get to, mm -hmm. David. We appreciate yeah. you taking the time. We would like to have you back at some point if you would be okay with that and maybe uh, really get into this because there's so many different areas we can talk about. Um, and I think we can all agree on at least one thing right now. We can put it out there to the world. Uh, stop, stop talking about all the things you can't do and start thinking about all the things you can do and then do them. Absolutely. And if you start doing that stuff, you're not going to go backwards because you wouldn't do that. That's right. That's right. And we're offering right now on our website, our brand new book on recovery for free. Uh, people can go there and download it. David Essel's Permanent Alcohol and Life Recovery. You can get the book for free at the website. Just go download it. Of course, you can get it at Amazon um, and take advantage of it. And there's two other books you can get for free as well, right at the website, talkdavid.com that's on the screen. And there's the book. And thank you so much. I appreciate both of you guys. This has been a blast. And yes, I'd come back in a heartbeat. Oh my God, Scott and John, in a heartbeat. All right, cool, Fan man. Fantastic. We'll definitely set that up for the near future because there's so many different areas that you guys didn't even get a chance to touch on that uh, that um, I'm just I would like to just sit back and drink my coffee and listen to you guys for hours. But I know that's not doable. But for now, I want to thank you, uh, David. Um, and again, talkdavid.com. Very simple. Go there. That's where they can find all your information, how to reach you, what to do, mm -hmm. get your books. You can certainly go on Amazon and get the books as well, too. Yeah, that sounds awesome. All right. We look forward to speaking with him again. And, John, um, another great guest, another great show. Absolutely. And, uh, you want to send the people off with a final thought there, brother? Never give up. And there are no failures. There are only lessons. Live into now. Stop hanging out in the future. The past is where you get your lessons from. So utilize today, this moment in time. There we go. For our Amen. special guest, David Essel, uh, John Giordano, I'm Scott Jones, saying we'll catch you next time right here on Beat Your Addictions.